We have gotten even more Black Ops 6 Zombies teaser trailers today as channels 3 and 4 have updated on thetruthdies.com. And these ones are absolutely crazy. Now we are still waiting on channels 5 and 6, although I'm not sure if 6 counts because it does have a zombie jump scare within it. So there's probably only one or two left and I'm assuming if it follows the truth or lies marketing for the initial Black Ops 6 reveal, then maybe once we've gotten the final ones that'll reveal the date when we're going to see the Black Ops 6 Zombies reveal, which might involve a gameplay trailer as well as an intro cutscene or something like that ahead of Call of Duty Next at the end of the month on August 28th. So in this video, I want to break down literally everything we have learned from the news teasers as well as go over some secrets that I missed from my prior video explaining the teasers from yesterday. And of course, we're approaching the weekend now and it's unclear if these teasers are going to continue into the weekend, but I'm assuming we'll get the full on trailer next week. With the Truth Lies marketing, they did actually mark it on the weekend, so it's not out of the question. So I want to go over the Channel 4 teaser that was posted first. At first, it just shows a advert about love or something like that. But then, just like the prior teasers, the screen starts glitching. And we see Mr. Peaks, specifically a Mr. Peaks gumball machine. So as you know, Gobblegums are back inside of the game. We're not sure exactly how it's going to work, but now we know that Gobblegums are definitely back. Of course, when they brought elixirs in Black Ops 4 Zombies, they removed having the machine entirely, so it's going to be something we're going to be able to physically obtain in the game. It's unclear though if it's going to be just like in Black Ops 3 Zombies, where you would get a free one at the start of every round, and then you would have to pay for subsequent ones, although it wasn't like that at launch. Initially, you had to pay, and they were in random spots, but they updated it later on to then be located in every single location. It's unclear exactly how it's going to work, but I'm so excited for Gobblegums to be back. Now, the the map that is shown with the Gobblegum machine on is in fact Terminus Island, so we can kind of see the outskirts, it's layered with barbed wire, you can see it's a full moon in the distance, and you can see of course there's a storm happening whilst the map is actually ongoing, and it is set at night of course, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Now the Gobblegum machine actually has a TV screen which you can see on it, so this will be playing all the time as you are on the map, and yeah, like I said, it's unclear if there's just going to be one spot on the map or if there are are going to be many, but we actually know of many different Gobblegums now that are confirmed to be back because we see them inside of the machine. So we know Perkaholic is going to be back, which grants you all of the perks at once. We know War Power is going to be back, which will pack a punch a war weapon you buy, but we don't know if this will give you tier 1 pack a punch, tier 2 or tier 3, or maybe there's going to be different rarities of War Power that allow you to get any of the tiers. There's then going to be a stock option 1, which will allow your ammunition to be taken from your stock instead. Profit share to allow you to have points shared with nearby players when you are shooting or doing whatever. Then we have Cache back. People are thinking maybe the original point system might be back considering profit sharing is, but I don't think this necessarily confirms it. It can still work with the current system. Honestly though, I'm quite surprised that Perkaholic is back. I was thinking they maybe would not have all of the overpowered Gobblegums that we saw in Black Ops 3 Zombies. Now right now, as I said, we don't know how the system's going to work in this game, but it's likely not going to be gambling like it was in Black Ops three zombies because most European countries have outlawed that in video games and Trek did say when Black Ops 6 was revealed that they were taking on feedback from Black Ops 3 zombies so I'm hoping it's a fair system we do know of course that there are gobblegums in the vault edition of the game and they will likely be coming with bundles that you buy in the store and in the battle passes but I'm hoping they're just extra bonuses in addition to a fair system in the game that you can grind these out so yeah as I said there's a TV screen on it and we get a shot of it and this is really really creepy. We see Mr. Peaks in the dark ether in a wood and it looks very creepy. There's lots of weird stuff dripping off of the trees and we can see the pods all over the pods that we had on Shadows of Evil on the ground. Now, a lot of people didn't play Vanguard Zombies, but these pods actually returned in Vanguard Zombies as well. They gave a new lore pertaining to them too in the Court Effects boss fight. So, this is something we've seen recently but they are back once again. So, most likely we're going to be able to explore this specific look in the Dark Aether in this Mr. Peaks shot actually in the game. I don't know if it's going to be on one of the launch maps, Terminus or Liberty Falls, or whether it's going to be on a future DLC map, but at some point, I'm sure we're going to go physically to this location, and there's going to be these pods all over the ground that you're going to be able to probably get loot from, as well as they're probably going to have Easter egg items in there, I guess similar to the pods that we had on Zetsubo Noshima as well. So I'm so excited that these are back. 
I really enjoyed that atmosphere and I can't wait to go in the dark ether again. It looks so creepy in this wood. I can't wait to explore it. I wonder if Order will be back roaming around in there and other weird monstrosities in the dark ether. And interestingly, on the Perkaholic logo, it seems to be the same one as before, showing them drinking a bottle. And this seems to be suggesting that Perk bottles are back instead of cans. And this isn't the first teaser we've gone to this because on Kevin Drew's desk when he presented Black Ops 6 Zombies for the first time, there was some Perk bottles of what appeared to be Juggernaug, Quick Revive, Speed Cola, and what looks to be Double Tap. So Double Tap might now be returning as a Perk. This means balls may be back instead of cans. As to why though, I'm not exactly sure. Zykov was supplying us with the Perks while I guess he gave the information. It probably doesn't really have much storyline relevance. I mean, there's still cans in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, which is set after. This could just be a gameplay choice. We do know that apparently the Knuckle Crack animation is returning for the Pack-a-Punch. So I wonder if maybe they're going to be bringing the perk bottle animation back where you can't shoot whilst you're drinking to make it a bit of a risk versus reward situation and make it more challenging to get perks mid-round, especially if Juggernaug, for example, is in a tight spot. I'm fine with bottles or cans though, I don't think it's really a big deal either way. Now before I get into the rest of the very juicy Black Ops 6 Zombies teasers, I first have a very awesome game to let you be aware of and then we'll be right back, so stay tuned. Enjoy. I've got something super exciting to share, a game that's a combination of some of your favourite genres into one epic experience. It's called Warden's Rising, and if you love ARPGs and MOBAs and tower defence games, you are in for a treat. Imagine a game where you get the intense action of ARPG shooters mixed with the strategic depth of MOBA-like base defences. That's exactly what this game delivers. Choose from five unique heroes, each with their own special abilities and gear, plan your strategy, build your defences, and fight off massive invasions and mighty bosses to protect vital energy cores. With PvE shooter action, you start by picking one of five unique heroes, each with distinct abilities and customizable gear. Whether you prefer going solo or teaming up with friends, the game has you covered. The PC demo is available for free now on Steam, and the full game is planned to launch on consoles too, the PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S in Q1 2025. While the demo is solo only, the full game will feature both co-op and multiplayer modes, allowing you to team up with up to four players for some intense, insane large-scale battles. The game the game is optimised for controllers, but also offers mouse and keyboard options, giving you the flexibility to play however you like. Protects vital energy cores from relentless interdimensional threats. You'll need to plan your strategy and build defences before each battle. Over time, you'll unlock new defence technologies like towers, traps, portals, walls and more. It's not just about brute strength. Being smart and strategic is key to surviving wave after wave of enemy invaders. But the action doesn't stop there. As you progress through the game, you'll embark on an exhilarating campaign, level up your heroes, unlock new gear and play endlessly, replay missions. There are 24 campaign maps and 12 mission mode maps, each presenting new challenges and massive invasions. And let's not forget about the epic boss fights. There are four mighty bosses waiting for you to defeat. Each hero in Warden's Rising can be customised with new gear, talents and perks as you level up, plus you'll have six spec companions, each with unique abilities to aid you in battle. And with over 40 tactical items and perks, you can tailor your hero to your preferred playstyle, with more than 15 upgradable defence structures to complement your strategy. The world of Warden's Rising is rich and immersive offering a blend of high-octane action and strategic depth. Whether you are playing through the campaign solo or teaming up with friends for mission mode battles, there's always something new to discover and conquer. But for now, if you are ready to become a legendary warden, join the fight to protect humanity from the relentless interdimensional threat. Check the link in the description to play the free demo now on Steam and wishlist Wardens Rising ahead of its full release, where you will be able to enjoy co-op and multiplayer, as well as consoles. Get started on your path to glory. And I want to give a huge thank you to the developers Big Moxie Games for kindly sponsoring this video so I can showcase it with you. I hope you love it. But so far, I want to stress, all of the marketing has been around Mr. Peaks. So I really think Mr. Peaks is going to be a huge part of the storyline of Black Ops 6 the Zombies. They replaced Samantha's Teddy in the mystery box in Cold War Zombies, and they of course helped us in both Vanguard Zombies and Cold War Zombies with the different side quests, giving us loot. And of course, they helped us with getting the mystery box weapons. Why they have been helping us though, I'm unclear, but whoever Mr. Peaks is, they have existed 
before Cold War Zombies, so whatever the law is, is going to date back before then, sometime after the events of Tag the Totem when the multiverse was collapsed. Now, I've speculated in prior videos about who they might be, which I'll talk about more later on in this video, but I really think we're going to get an answer definitively in Black Ops 6 Zombies as to who Mr. Peaks is and the relation they have. Now, as to why they are helping us, again, it is unclear. The Forsaken helped us with power-ups in the past and the perk machines, so they can still be an antagonist or an evil entity and be helping us out. I mean, after all, the same can be said when Samantha and Richthofen controlled the zombies in the MPD. Another thing I want to point out is in this shot, we see the mystery box the light in the background. So, of course, we know the mystery box is going to be back. However, the light appears to be purple. Now, I think this is just because of the filter that they have on it that's making it look purple. I think it's probably going to be blue just like usual. The reason I thought I would point this out, though, is because in the trailers the other day, we did see yellow-eyed zombies. However, there was other shots on Liberty Falls where the zombie eye colors looked kind of like blue. So, people were thinking maybe Richtofen is back in control on Liberty Falls. However, once again, I think this is most likely just because of the filter. It's turned the yellow to blue, and in this case, with the mystery box of light, blue to purple. But that's just what I'm thinking. Now, also in the background of this shot is a giant water tower, which very much reminds me of Blood of the Dead, which, of course, we had to shoot it down as a step to get the Hell's Redeemer. And not only is there going to be a Mr. Peaks Gobblegum, but it's even going to have a jingle, which says there's a threat you cannot see. Have you heard of Mr. Peaks? He is here to feed you all if you can afford his ball. Then we hear chew 12 times, chew until you die. Have you heard of Mr. Peaks? Now, from the jingle, it does sound like Mr. Peaks is an evil entity, but again, we don't know exactly for sure. Now, people are saying as to what this has in relation to Dr. Monty. Dr. Monty, of course, was the one who created the Gobblegums in the Etherverse, but I don't think this necessarily has anything to do with Dr. Monty. It's possible the Gobblegums were just sent into the Dark Ether, and Mr. Peaks claimed them as their own. Now, we've gotten that teaser out of the way. Let's go to Channel 3. Now, this one's really interesting. Once again, it's in Washington, D.C., where a lot of the Black Ops 6 teasers have been, both for the campaign, because we're heading there in the campaign, but also for zombies. Now, within the last teaser, there seemed to be rioting that was breaking out, and I didn't really know if this rioting was happening on Liberty Falls or not, because maybe these military guards were sent in to control people when they were all trying to evacuate the area after the zombie outbreak. Maybe that's where the rioting took place. Or this could be happening in Washington, D.C. itself. What I'm thinking is, maybe the public finds out about what happened on Liberty Falls. We knew in 19 85, Richthofen was trying to shut down the town in West Virginia with a fake cover story of a power plant leak. But citizens were asserting their rights as American citizens. I wonder if that leaks out to the public and then there's rioting going on in Washington. That would be an interesting setup, but again, it could just be on Liberty Falls these shots because after all, we do know Liberty Falls is going to be a multiplayer map as well and we see that there are police cars all over. Maybe once again, this is before the zombies map was set or it could be after. Either way, obviously, a massive massacre happened with the zombies outbreak and on the guards helmets it says 1811 on I'm unclear if that is of any particular significance in the canon let me know in the comments and in the background there is a face which kind of to me looks similar to Richthofen but maybe I'm completely crazy it's very pixely and we can only see the top of his head but it does resemble Richthofen of course we know Richthofen is the one sending in these guards on Liberty Falls and probably Washington DC as well if he sends in guards there too now I definitely think Washington DC could be a zombies map as well in the future future, maybe even the White House itself or something crazy like that in the DLC, considering so much of the marketing seems to be centered around here and we know Richthofen is high up in government, I could totally see something like that. Now, I don't think we would see another map set in the Pentagon because we've already had classified a 5 remake, so I don't think they would do that again, but we could see a special zombies map, a modern version of 5 with, for example, Saddam Hussein, Bill Clinton, Margaret Thatcher, something like that could work. But yeah, probably not there specifically, but like I said, we know we're heading to Washington DC in the campaign, so it might just be the general city that we can explore, and if it's a campaign level, they might reuse a lot of assets, so it might be somewhat similar to Mauer de Totem, where it's a campaign level as well as a zombies map, and they have very similar layouts. So moving on to the Channel 3 teaser, we see the Pentagon, and it says, Breaking news, CIA documents released. So basically, they have unsealed the documents of Project Janus, which is why I'm wondering if it leaks out what's going on 
down in Liberty Falls and there's rioting across the country. This would be really interesting, I think, storyline-wise, because I think a big disappointing factor of Cold War Zombies is everything was so secretive, the public never found anything out, and it made everything feel a lot smaller scale. But I don't think this is going to happen because, of course, we know that Miller, as a child, was there when the zombie outbreak happened at Liberty Falls, and it was kept very secretive. Almost no one knew about it, and it seems that anyone who did was killed within the CIA, so she kept her lips tight. So I doubt the public finds out, but maybe they find out some things, but not exactly everything that happens. Maybe nothing regarding the zombies specifically, but they might find out some of the dodgy stuff that the CIA and Richthofen was up to with Project Janus. So the screen starts glitching, and then we see Mr. Peaks, which looks to be in some sort of control room. We see some radios, some thermometers in the background, and I can't tell if he's stood on top of a mystery box location that's just not present at that location at the particular time. It could be on Terminus, then maybe even the spot where the character was watching the surveillance cameras. Now we then see loads of unsealed documents on the Requiem heads, but the first one is about a new character. So the letter is dated for Project Janus, the 17th of September, 1987. So this is four years before the events of Black Ops 6 Zombies. It seems to say to Station Chief Maxwell, we are writing to inform you that Ernst Duffer has been assigned to serve four, and then it's blank. I think Terminus for the foreseeable future. So this probably explains who the bold character is watching the surveillance cameras and is one of the guards on Terminus watching the Requiem heads imprisoned. Most likely this is this new character known as Ernst Duffer. I could be wrong, but that's most likely who they are. It says Mr. Duffer previously served in a similar position at a facility in Hohenschönhausen in Germany. I probably butchered that pronunciation, but maybe this is even going to be a future zombies map in the DLC. Maybe they're giving us little clues for where we're going to be heading in the future. It seems that Duffer as well studied professional history at this place, so maybe this museum could be a zombies map, like I said, in the future. While we cannot disclose his professional history at this time, please understand that we believe he will uphold the standard of quality we have come to expect from Terminus Island. Sincerely, Project Janus Administration. So yeah, it seems like Rick Toffin has been doing stuff on Terminus Island for a while. Of course, he had the Requiem heads imprisoned in 1985 after the Forsaken. They've been there for literally five years before Peck and Maya come to rescue them in 1991 in February, but it seems he was there in the meantime, so yeah, that is interesting there. We then have documents and all of the Requiem heads. So the first one is of Carver, which is the Interrogation Progress Brief. Subject, Carver McKenzie Interrogator Ernst Duffer. So it seems like Duffer has been interrogating all of these people. We know, of course, they had their DNA samples extracted. It seems like they've been getting experimented on and interrogated for their dark ether qualities due to their exposure of the dark ether in this five years that they've been held there. Initial intake status, train to counteract interrogation tactics, time to get creative. He boosts morale for the group, break him, break them all. So I guess it's very similar to what the director, Rick Toffin, did with Samantha in Block 8 in Cold War Zombies interrogating her. Current status has resorted to shutting down via dissociation during interrogation. Careful to conserve his energy in my presence. Running physical training sessions with his companions have kept him stable, considering isolation. So what I want to stress is when we next see these characters, they're going to be different to when they where you last saw them because they've had to endure five years of interrogation and extreme trauma. They are probably all going to be suffering from PTSD when we next see them. And I think this is actually a good thing because it's going to provide further layers and nuances and complexities to their characters that we can relate to. Obviously, it's not a good thing for anyone to actually suffer these things, but they're not real people. We then have a brief on Strauss. So Strauss is one of the inmates, but for some reason, he's not a playable character. He's being replaced by Maya, so maybe he's still imprisoned. However, it seems like he's been working for Richthofen because his brief says he's interrogated by Ernst Duffer again, clings to, we can't really make out, moral standards, questions his core, will take time to crack, be sure his knowledge is integral to our objective. So obviously he's been uh, working with the Dark Aether ever since he was forced to work with the Nazis all the way back in World War II. He's probably one of the most knowledgeable people, aside from Richthofen himself on the Dark Aether. So his current status, welfare of teammates and curiosity keeps him on task. Grip and reality is loosened considerably. He has become very adept at misdirection, exercise caution. So most likely he's probably being forced to give information on the Dark Aether, maybe work on experiments for Richthofen. Now of course we know that by 1996 all of the characters sacrificed themselves to a device for some unknown reason. Maybe Richthofen is the one who forces them to do this. Maybe he even gets Strauss to build this device. It's a bit unclear. We then have the brief for Weaver. This is probably the most important one. So again, he's been interrogated by Ernst Duffer. His initial intake status says blames himself for the incarceration of Requiem, brainstorm ways to exploit this. Acts as an anchor point for the rest of his team, keeping 
kingdom separated from Grey and Strauss may give us an advantage. The director wants this one to suffer. Current status without a clear purpose, Weaver has become a broken, bitter man. Physical labour will continue to take place before our sessions. It makes him more malleable. So I think this is important because it brings me back onto speculation regarding Mr. Peaks because basically in my prior videos I've speculated that Mr. Peaks might actually be the unwanted child of Cortifex and Seraxis because we know that Cortifex did something horrible to his child. We don't know what and maybe he turned him into this inanimate object. And we have intel in Cold War Zombies that talks about a boy named Samuel that might have accidentally been killed by Weaver after he was given intel by Samantha Maxis for an assassination target by the CIA that we think might have been Richthofen. And after he thought he killed Richthofen, he burned down his house to cover his tracks, later learning his wife and son were inside. So maybe his wife and son perished, but somehow maybe Richthofen's son ended up as an ethereal orb in the dark ether. Maybe the red orb that we see in the second Outbreak quest. Because we see that this orb bonds with Mr. Peaks. And there's a note that says Mr. Peaks keeps me safe in the dark place. So maybe because they're both children, they bond with each other and protect each other in the dark ether. And maybe Richthofen's trying to restore his son from an orb that might be in the dark ether. Because at the end of the day, the dark ether is basically like hell. So maybe there's a way Richthofen can restore him and clone him because we know the dark ether is capable of cloning capabilities. And this makes complete sense because we see Richthofen has a scar on his throat and eyebrow, so maybe Weaver thought he killed him, but he managed to survive. And now, maybe this is enacting his plan with Project Janus, he wants to somehow bring his son back, and also get revenge on Samantha and Weaver. He's already gotten revenge on Samantha, she's trapped in the Dark Ether, and he says that he wants Weaver to suffer. The director specifically says that, so that could be because he wants revenge on what he did. Now, we don't know why Richthofen was a CIA target for assassination, and how he managed to then plan himself within the CIA itself, as the director of Requiem, afterwards. We're not exactly sure as to how he's concealed his identity, if we're true with this theory, but that's what I'm thinking right now. I mean, there's literally intel as well in Cold War Zombies that talks about a boy with knowledge and potentially dangerous as an ethereal orb, so all this theory seems to line up. I'll leave some links to explanations in this video's description, but that's my current idea. Maybe Mr. Peaks is helping us, but I don't know why Mr. Peaks would be helping us with the gobblegums and with everything else. It's a bit unclear. The final brief we have is of Elizabeth Grey. Again, interrogate by own stuffer, initial intake status, impudent and willful in session, but footage from holding cells suggests she is putting on a brave face. Repeatedly stated during intake that someone would come looking for her and other members of Requiem. Current status acts ambivalent in regards to her own safety. No longer responds to threats of physical harm, has stated she no longer believes anyone is coming for her. So yeah, she's had these delusions that someone's coming for her, but I guess she's right. The director wants her, and we know that Dr. Grey ends up being the surrogate mother of Samantha and Ravanov, who seemingly had their DNA extracted by Requiem without their consent. So maybe she is then forced into this. As to why she was forced to give birth to Ava, it's unclear. Maybe he needs Ava for Project Janus. It's really unclear right now. But I think this is really big information. What I don't understand though is why would they unseal these documents from Project Janus to let everyone know about it? Now I guess there's no specific mention of zombies within them, but it just shows the interrogation of the characters. But it seems like they're going to be maybe putting the blame on these characters for a particular reason, and maybe this is what then causes all of the rioting. Weaver and the rest of the Requiem heads could be blamed for a lot that has gone on, and then they release these documents to try and justify things, to try and make them seem bad, and them interrogating them not being a problem and being for a right cause. And I'm wondering if them unsealing these documents might even be a part of Project Janus itself. Maybe part of Richthofen's plan, another way to get revenge, or this could just literally be for marketing and might not actually be anything to do with the canon or storyline. Now, the CIA documents also show some shredded documents, which seems to be Thai language. This could be in relation to Terminus because it's in the Pacific, maybe it's close to Thailand, and maybe there's documents pertaining to that. That could be a reason. Now, in my last video, I forgot to mention that some numbers actually play during the first teaser, which I'll play for you now. Seven, six, seven, five. They say 76115. We didn't know what it meant, of course. Maybe this is just a reference to 115. But actually, people have found that it could be referring to a Kipling poem called Boots, which is a special 1915 recording we hear, which was used to train soldiers to survive torture and imprisonment. And considering we know that these characters are being interrogated, they could be getting brainwashed or trained by these numbers. And that could be why we hear them, because it is within a Terminus teaser as well. So that could be exactly why. Now, in my prior video, 
as well, I said that we see on the surveillance cameras five different cell numbers, but we don't see cell one. Now, I think there are many other people held within these cells. I think that maybe in another cell is one of Maya's relatives, and that's why she's going with Peck to try and rescue the Requiem heads, because she also wants to break out maybe her sibling, her brother, or her father, or someone like that. And I think in the other cells could be the strike team, as well as potentially Raptor 1 that was similarly apprehended by Richthofen soldiers at the end of Forsaken. I think this prison is vast. We see the island is definitely very huge, so I don't think it is just them being held here. And another thing regarding Terminus is it is a secret island. The fisherman tells Peck when he says he's looking for a boat to go to this location, there's nothing there. And on the map, we don't see the island. So the public doesn't know about this spot. It's very secretive. Now, we actually know from the Truth Dies website that the teaser statement says, nowhere is safe, survive if you can. Now, of course, we know Terminus is going to be set at night with Liberty Force set at day, but both maps are taking place simultaneously. The outbreaks are taking place simultaneously. And of course, in yesterday's teasers, it seems to be taking place at 3 a.m. But this seems to just be the cutscene, the prelude before the zombie outbreak actually occurs or as it's occurring. So the map might be set, you know, 3.30 or 4, a little bit after then, but around this time on the 19th of February, 1991, where all the Rec Room heads are doing push-ups and they seem to be getting ready to break out. They're preparing to get revenge on Richthofen. I don't know if they know that Peck and Maya are coming to rescue them at this point, or they know a zombie outbreak is about to occur. Maybe they even plan it. We're not exactly sure, but we know Richthofen seemed to be preparing for a zombie outbreak on the island, considering he literally had a Dark Aether cannon created for that reason. Now, earlier I mentioned the fact that we think that Weaver killed Richthofen's wife and son and burned down the house. And in the last teaser, we did see a shot where we saw a family, which seems to be a husband and wife and their child running out of a house that's set on fire. Now, some people are speculating this is the incident and maybe we're going to get a flashback cutscene showing this event. However, this is definitely a Liberty Falls, so it's not Richthofen's family. We know this because there's a very short segment where it flickers on screen and it says Liberty PD, which might be standing for police department. This might be, again, a surveillance camera of what's happened here. So I'm thinking it's not actually their family, but I think this shot might actually be Miller's family escaping because we've had radios in Modern Warfare Zombies where we know Miller, as he was saying before, was a child on Liberty Falls as the zombie outbreak was occurring and they were trying to evacuate. We know that her mother and father run away. We know her father ends up turning into a zombie and her mother probably as well or dies. We'll find out within the next radio that's added in Season 5 Reloaded. So I'm thinking that this shot is probably of Miller and her mother and father escaping, but I guess it could be any family, but it's probably them if I had to guess. There is then another shot where we see the town of Liberty Falls. There's lots of houses on fire. There's lots of trucks on fire. And we do also see a zombie, what seems to be attacking a civilian on the floor and eating them. Now, it's rumored, according to leaks, that there's going to be civilians actually on the map that we're going to have to evacuate and try and exfil because we're going to be playing as an elite unit that's been sent in to investigate the map. Now, I just hope that those objectives are not forced or they're not annoying or maybe it's just going to be within the Easter egg or that you don't have to do them. Maybe it's just something for bonuses. Of course, we had it in Exo Zombies and it was really annoying. So yeah, the map might be taking place literally as an evacuation is happening as there's humans running about and zombies might be attacking them. So it might be a more dynamic map than we are used to. I'm really excited. It's going to be a very, very interesting map. That's all I wanted to say though in this video. This has been quite a long one. Like I said, more teasers will be coming soon, so I'll be sure to cover them and we'll be probably getting a reveal trailer very soon as well. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.